we are now officially in the month of July, and if you're a Zelda fan like I am, it does mean that it is time to start getting hyped for Skyward Sword HD, and clearly Nintendo has not forgotten this as they are starting their full media marketing push, and in today's video, we have to talk about the new quality of life improvement trailer that Nintendo dropped and what this will ultimately mean for Skyward Sword HD and whether or not it is worth your $60 investment. What's up, nation? If it's your first time on the channel, make sure you join Sunburn Nation by subscribing below. Hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it today, and make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. Now, as I mentioned today, guys, we are talking about Skyward Sword HD, and that is because Nintendo has given us the long-awaited trailer of what's new in this game, as I did expect them to do something like this at some point because they did this with both Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD as far as what has changed trailers and what's new in the HD. HD remaster and we've been waiting all the way up until now to get this information and it is you know very last minute as at the time of filming this video it is July 2nd and Skyward Sword HD is scheduled to release on July 16th so we are extremely close about two weeks away from this thing actually dropping on store shelves and we did get a very helpful trailer that breaks down all of the new quality of life changes that will be added into Skyward Sword HD and man did it need some of these changes so I do want to kind of go through through step by step which changes were announced and how that will probably impact the gameplay and then we will have you know of course the discussion around whether or not this game is worth the full $60 price point which spoiler alert and I am a very huge Zelda fan it is going to be worth your $60 investment and that is just my personal opinion but we will break down why that is as we discuss these quality of life improvements that Nintendo, Nintendo has announced as of today. So the first thing they list in their trailer is optional help from Fi or Fee. I think most people say Fee online, so I'll just conform and go ahead and say Fee for this video, but I've always said Fi. That's neither here nor there, though. Basically, she's only going to appear if you want her to. So that is a big deal in and of itself for the simple fact that if you talk to anybody who has played through the original version on the Wii, they will say time and time again how overbearing Fee was and just her always popping up and over-explaining things and sometimes truly actually giving you the solution to a puzzle while you were working on it before you even have the opportunity to figure out itself I mean it was just a really silly thing I think Nintendo wanted a more detailed Navi but I don't know if they were really aiming to help kids through the game at this point or what but they definitely overused her and there's some of the explanations and breakdowns that she gives are just you know really obvious stuff in the game so having her as an optional character to help out it's not like she doesn't have a huge role to play in the story and I won't say too much about that just in case you guys haven't played it because she definitely does but you know you can leave her for cutscenes and important story moments but what she doesn't need to be doing is popping up every second and every other second whenever you're trying to find a new item or solve a new puzzle and you just need a couple minutes to figure it out and you don't want to have that you know fun puzzle exploration type of stuff you know ruined by really what's supposed to be a help mechanic in the game but just definitely overdone so V is no longer something someone who will continue to pop up you know unless if you want her to which is still a nice addition because if you maybe you are a smaller kid and you don't know how to figure out some of the more complex puzzles and you want to use her help it looks like you can just pause and toggle and turn her on or go ahead and you know just ask for help in that specific part of the game but I am glad that she is optional at this point because that was a big change that needed to happen even a video I made months back when we were still speculating on what kind of changes we might see in Skyward Sword HD that was one of the top things on my list is it just absolutely needed to be revamped and Nintendo definitely listened to fan feedback when it comes to fee and the next quality of life improvement they detailed was the 60 frames per second which is obviously expected at this point as you know the switch is going to run this base game that was originally developed for the Wii significantly better and 60 frames per second is not a hard benchmark for a hardware like the switch to hit but I will tell you guys that that makes a huge difference and if you haven't you know looked at side by side gameplay with a 30 FPS versus 60 FPS it is no noticeably more smooth when you're running at 60 frames per second and that does play into how the overall experience and how crisp and responsive this is going to feel especially if you are playing with motion controls or probably even button controls and just you will see link sword swing without any kind of choppiness or delay and I always give the example of people who you know maybe they don't know they don't think 30 frames per second versus 60 frames per second is a huge difference what I will tell you to do is go play Mario Kart Wii U Deluxe on the switch and go ahead and 
play it first in single player mode and notice how smooth everything looks then play it in a multiplayer split screen mode and you will immediately notice a huge stutter and delay compared to what you were adjusted to is playing through single player and that is the difference between 30 fps and 60 fps and so i'm very pumped to see that added into skyward sword of course it was something we pretty much already knew to expect but just having nintendo you know reaffirm that that's part of the value add that they did for this 60 dollars you know port or remaster to the switch it is going to, going to be nice to have buttery smooth controls and buttery smooth frame rates in this skyward sword hd experience at 60 fps and the next one on the list kind of cracked me up to begin with because this should really be a part of any baseline zelda game and it shouldn't even really be listed as a quality of life improvement but sadly it is for skyward sword because there was not up to this point a way to make text go faster whenever you're talking to nbc npcs or getting explanations for things or even just parts in the story you couldn't go ahead and make the text go by fast i'm pretty sure you could do this in most every zelda game up to this point i mean ocarina of time i know i would hold the b button all the time for people that i was not you know wanting to hear what they had to say and it would skip past the text box no problem well you do now have that option in skyward sword hd it definitely should have been there the first time around but you know if you're somebody like i am who certain npcs you want to just get you know the, the words that are highlighted in red with maybe like the really important stuff but you want to skip all of the you know just day-to-day -day talk that they're trying to bring up and trying to kind of pull you more into the world it just kind of gets mundane and re repetitive at certain points so we will now have that option to hold down the b button and skip through text now from there they're adding in what they're calling streamlined item descriptions and that is a very welcome addition as you know if you found a green rupee you probably don't need an explanation the second third or fourth time on what that rupee does and how it impacts the world of zelda and i'm willing to bet most people that are picking up this game it'll probably not be their first zelda title they've probably at least played like breath of the wild or they played ocarina of time or they played you know twilight princess something where they understand what the concept of rupees and basic items in the world are and if you you didn't know the, there was a big problem with over explaining in this game and then again not being able to fast forward the text on the actual you know explanation of these items and I think that this is all accumulating little small stuff that made people not like this game as a 3d Zelda title and it is such an important one for the story that you know you really can't get caught up on those small things and overlook what it has to offer but I think now that Nintendo's addressing so many of these such as item descriptions being overbearing and too long and now giving those more of a streamlined approach i think that that's all stuff that will add up to actually make this a more complete experience now from there in case if you are wanting to play the game multiple times they are adding in skippable cutscenes, which you know some cutscenes are very important there's other ones that aren't but i would definitely recommend if it's your first time playing through the game to absolutely watch them because this is one of the most important stories arguably the most important story in all of the legend of zelda series and so i do think that fans need to go ahead and watch them the first time through but if you're somebody that wants to you know 100 percent it and kind of do it over and over again and cares more about the gameplay than the cutscenes, or you've already played this game multiple times and you don't want to go ahead and watch them again well now you have the option just to simply you know press the start button or the skip button and go ahead and you know skip past that and save all those hours of times because there this is a cutscene heavy game uh, which i think it needs to be honestly but it's a nice option to go ahead and have that in there just in case if you're somebody who's not wanting to watch through each one of those as they pop up then the last couple features they mentioned are stuff like auto save which is obviously expected in this era of gaming it is nice that you can always manually save on just about any of these older zelda games but auto save will now be added in there because if you guys have you know kind of like me over the years have just gotten more accustomed to games automatically saving for you and you don't remember to go into the menu and manually save you may be very upset if you got interrupted and maybe your switch dies because it's in handheld mode or something like that i mean then you have a big problem on your hands and you have to replay part of the game so autosave is definitely a welcome feature that is really expected in most games these days and then they do mention finally that they have skip skippable tutorial dialogue so basically if you start out the game and this was a common complaint as well that the tutorial was way too long and way too hand holding and now it's something that you know if you feel confident enough just to kind of you know dive into the main game it sounds like you're going to be able to skip a lot of the dialogue that they try to break down and you know expose you to as far as the tutorial of the games and really the starting off overall feel of the game and that's 
one of the things that you know stuck out to me the first time when i just immediately realized that you know two three hours into the game that i was really getting turned off already by this experience and it's because it felt grindy right out of the gate like i was ready for some big stuff to happen and it felt like the game was holding my hand so seeing all of these different various quality of life improvements finally detailed makes this game more than 60 dollars worth more than 60 dollars to me personally because it is such a pivotal story for the legend of zelda franchise it now looks incredible as this game was originally rendered at 480p on the wii which is an incredibly low resolution and you could clearly see the pixels if you're playing on a bigger tv it obviously still had great textures and all of that to offer but it was buried behind that low resolution now we're seeing the textures pop out and come to life and then we're also seeing you know different lighting and shadow effects added in that the game really needed and it's going to make it shine more than ever before so while you could argue hey this game came out on the wii at 50 dollars why are we paying for 60 dollars now on the switch well, I would tell you that it's going to be worth it simply for the button controls for me, but then you tack on all the other stuff like the 60 FPS, the smooth HD textures, and you know, all of these various just small tweaks where the game's not gonna feel as grindy starting out. I feel like this, all these different changes that Nintendo outlined in this trailer will absolutely give fans, you know, the ability to enjoy this game for what it really is. And I'm planning on playing through it multiple times. And I would have never said that about the Wii version. So I can personally, I can't wait for July 16th. It's right around the corner. I'll be sure to do, you know, videos covering the game as it's released. So make sure you're subscribed for that stuff. But guys, at this point in the video, I want to know your personal opinions on what you think from Nintendo on Skyward Sword HD. Are you kind of in the camp that that whole Amiibo debacle made you be made you mad that you couldn't you know uh, teleport back to the sky in instantly without buying a 25 dollar amiibo and is that turning you off from maybe buying this game or do you feel like it's maybe not worth the 60 dollar price tag that nintendo is asking or are you in my boat where you think all these changes and how important this story is to zelda as a whole definitely makes it worth it so please share all your thoughts with me on that stuff in the comment section down below before you do leave the video and then also hop over to the community tab on the channel where i will be asking you about what quality of life improvement you think was most needed and vote on the poll before you do leave the video today thanks so much for watching the video today everyone i do truly appreciate you all sticking around until the end i do at this point in the video want to invite you all one more time to join some nation if you haven't done so already do so by subscribing below hit the like button on your way out if you enjoyed it today and make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news that's going to do it for me guys i hope you all have a great day some nation out